What's up, guys? Ray Fromm here, giving you guys a review of AEW Dynamite for 3-29-2023. Now, make sure to rate, like, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon, ding -a ling ling so you know when I go live and when I throw up a video, you get notified. Same with all my other video platforms, so keep in mind. We're on Rumble, we're on BitChute, we're on everything. So, same with streaming. We just added Daily Motion back, we're on Kick. Trovo, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, everything down below in the sh in the channel notes, the show notes. So just keep in mind, this week's going to be a little hectic for me because it's WrestleMania week. And then we have WrestleMania weekend. Then we have news breaking. Then we have things happening. We're going to have debuts and all this stuff. And then we have tomorrow a pay-per-view. So if I'm lurking in your stream or I'm kind of around... It's just because wrestling is taking precedent. Next week, we'll be back to being normal. So with the so on. I know I'm going to miss out on a couple big events for my friend's streams. And I apologize for that. It's just wrestling is taking precedent this week. And so with the so on. So let's get into the review of AEW Dynamite for you guys. Um, honestly, I'm just going to tell you, Adam Cole returning to in-ring competition after months and months and months. I'm just going to tell you guys, best for business. I'm glad to see him healthy. I'm glad to see him okay. Um, tonight, he took a couple of bumps from Daniel Garcia, and I really thought at one point he was his hands were flailing, but it wasn't like that. Um, I thought, you know, he was selling things. Um, the concussion stuff, they're going to make it into a thing going forward until, you know, months and months into action. So Daniel Garcia landing pile drivers and uh, lariats and things like that, that's typical Daniel Garcia. Daniel Garcia had a mission to go in for the head and the jugular. And, it, you know, Daniel Garcia is going to be a champion one of these days for AEW or Ring of Honor. He is that talented. He is that good. Adam Cole, I could see him in line to be a champion uh, in the next few months. If you're not going to bring back CM Punk or CM Punk by the day is ruining his chances and then John Moxley's doing what he's doing. This is, and I'm gonna, I want to talk about that news too. Like, you know... Ladies and gentlemen, like, AEW needs to get their shit together. I'm kind of seeing it on All Access because I'm recording this as I'm watching All Access. And you kind of see some of the backstage stuff. And, you know, is it a work? Is this a work or a shoot? That's the thing that going forward. Um, I really think, honestly, that AEW needs to sit down with all these wrestlers and clear the air and clear the air with us fans. I really believe that. And last week, I, I dumped on AEW, right? I dumped on AEW because the show could have been a lot better, except for Van Kingo and Kenny Omega. I said that was one of the matches of the year. Kenny putting him over, and Van Kingo should be in AEW signed. He is great talent. I can see him as TNT champion. But again, AEW's got to have these... Stop doing these four great shows and then doing one bad one. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, this, this show was good. Um, it kind of, you know, made Jungle Boy uh, Jack Perry better, made him a little bit more convincing. His promo work is getting better. Um, that, that stuff with MJF, that needs to happen every week. MJF needs to come out and be like that every week. Not going to kid you, not going to lie. MJF needs to do this either every, every other week or do it, you know, when it's really important. Because last week it showed without that, without that promo, work that MJF does at the very beginning where he calls out a wrestler it it shows when AEW doesn't do it, it it lacks when you don't have you know when you're not doing the hulky pokey kind of stuff with you know Orange Cassie at the very beginning and then you're doing six man tags it shows you're lacking and that's why I complained last week because a lot of it was just mixed matched and didn't make any sense honestly it really didn't but this week it had a sense of purpose this week you could tell you know, they took the feedback from last week and they brought it into this week. And now you're seeing what all, AEW All Access, it kind of connects in with everything. You know what I mean? And we're seeing Adam Cole's story. You know what I mean? That's the cool part. I'll have a review of the first episode of AEW um, All Access. Um, again, Adam Cole's return, winning. Cole last wrestled for Forbidden Door. They, they kind of gave you kind of, you know, to where they were kind of giving you like a build up to the main event. And that's what AEW needs to be doing. There needs to be a story within a story within a story to get you to love what's going on. 
Again, also set for AEW Dynamite, will make his first defense of the IWGP. Again, he fought Jeff Cobb one hell of a match. Jeff Cobb should be in AEW personally. He should have signed with AEW. It is really good. AEW makes moves. They do, like I said, they do four great shows and then they have one off show. You know, that's not really that good. And they need to lead that into um, into Rampage, right? They need to lead that into Rampage personally, right? They really, 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 really need to do that. They really need to kind of have this momentum. They need to have all shows flying off, like Dynamite, Ring of Honor, because Ring of Honor is taped, right? Those are good. Those are really, really good, you know, you know, stuff during the week. You know, like those two shows are the bar. And then kind of it goes, Rampage is kind of in the middle between, you know, Dark and Elevation. So, you know, when I do those reviews this week, like I'm kind of behind and I know it and I still got to do NXT. But to be honest with you this week, AEW did well. I would say NXT is a step above still over Dynamite this week. I would say so far, Monday Night Raw, NXT, and then I would honestly tell you Dynamite, and then if Ring of Honor tomorrow is really good, if there is a show, I would say it would be probably, if it's anything anything like that, it would probably be really, really good over Dynamite. I've been saying this for a while. Dynam uh, Ring of Honor has been doing better than, than Dynamite to me. But that may change. That may flip. You know what I mean? We'll see how that week goes. But, you know, like I said, Orange, Ca Orange Cassidy defended his title against the Butcher. Anyone. Butcher was doing a bunch of good moves. The Butcher is great talent. Uh, don't take that away from him. He was really good in the indie scene with, you know, again, um, the Blade. Uh, again, the Blade was also with the Bunny in um, Impact. Uh, it worked very, very well there and it works very well here um again like i said jungle boy came out he defeats um you know matt hardy easily convincing said the match itself was good how long has it been since a big story post match got confronted between mjf and perry they had a back and forth they were slaying each other jungle boy jack perry is getting better a lot of people sit here and say jungle boy is garbage and he's just too green between the ears but he's getting better and what you're seeing with Tony Khan is they're building these pillars. They got to build their farm system. Like, you know, if, if the elite and Kenny go to WWE at the end of the year or in the middle of the year, right? You got to start building up this farm talent. You have to build your people that you brought in and you got to build the Sammy Kavaras. You got to build the MJFs. You got to build the Darby Allens. Cause if you don't do this, the, the powerhouse Hobbs, if you don't build these people, you know, or the Wheel of Yudas and things like that. If you don't build these people, you're going to crumble when the major talent, because you got to see the thing is, that's why, that's why, you know, I think MJF is not doing a bidding war in 2024. I believe that's not happening. Again, like I said, like I've said before, MJF is good at what he does. I think he's going to be a long-term AEW guy. May have it wrong. Jungle Boy Jack Perry is really good talent. I don't think his character would work, honestly. In WWE at this point. I think he'd be mid-card at best. Maybe fighting for an IC belt. I don't think WWE would value him like that. But in AEW, I could see him winning a AEW World Champion. I could see him being the face of it. Um, I think he's just a little still green between the years. Just a tad. Needs some more work. But again, this is where I like about AEW. Is they build within the company. This is what I fell in love with AEW. Is the fact that they're building within. Within. Okay. Again, the segment was good. Um, let's see here. Came in between potentially be uh, be one of the matches MJF for the title down the line. Like I said, again, they may have a triple. They may have a fatal four way at uh, double or nothing. But that's kind of coming more and more. It's going to be Adam Cole and MJF. What it looks like a double or nothing, or it could be a returning CM Punk. Again, this whole CM Punk drama situation is interesting to me. Like, is it a work? Is it a shoot? Is this just getting People to believe that, you know, truly, you know, this is where Tony Khan needs to come in and, and clear the air with people, man. Like, this is what I'm, this is the one thing about AEW I don't like is the fact they need to come in and they need to address the shit when it comes to the, either MJ, the MJF stuff or the CM Punk stuff. CM Punk is slaying 
all over Instagram, and then he's taking shit down because I, I, I'm really starting to believe it's a work, and we're just being worked, and then we'll see him possibly before Double or Nothing or Forbidden Door, and then we're having this whole conversation again. I think, you know, Chris Jericho and all this shit is all just a work. Um, you know what I mean? I just think it's all just a work and stuff like that. You know, at the end of the day, I could be wrong. I could be seeing it all wrong. And maybe the dirt sheets are right. So Sothi Hathaway came out. Uh, he said, Sothi Hathaway is missing ring sign defeated from Hook last week. Both met and had a chance to back and forth with Hardy being sent to the floor as Paige uh, put a uh, stomp in a potential Perry drive delaying long enough. Hardy catched up with Perry in midair. Side effect. Uh, Darby Allen and Sammy Guevara were down, shown watching backstage. Perry fought off, but double-sided sledge from the barricade before the sled fest upon the apron. Another side effect from Hardy. This time, Edge in the apron took us to a commercial break. Again, right as Perry res MJF's music hit and the AEW World Champion came out. Again, they had they were slaying each other in promos, so just keep that in mind. And then MJF came out, and then, you know, Jungle Boy did win the match against Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy's becoming more and more on putting over talent and enhancing talent until his probably his brother, you know, his brother shows up in the building. I think, you know, the Hardys have one more run, maybe a couple, two, about three more runs with probably in the tag team between Ring of Honor and that. I think they'll retire. And I think, Matt, I think Jeff Hardy's got to run potentially for a TNT belt or I think, you know, world heavyweight, but that's just my opinion. So MJF gives advice to Perry, ditching his friends and looking out for himself. MJF mentioned Perry is not hanged out with, with Marco Stunt, the Dino Douche or Chris or Christian or Christian Cage. AEW could have been the Jack Perry show three years later. MJF is holding the world title. Perry is still Jungle Boy. Perry calls MJF a selfish narcissist and a piece of shit <laughs> and he becomes the AEW world champion not waking up alone every day so basically pretty much you know hitting back and forth between each other and then there was a backstage interview with Alex Morvez and requesting Don Callis who told Kenny Omega he lost his balance last week with Hangman Page Adam Page in question both got beat up teed up basically bleeding left and rubble so with and so on so just keep that in mind you know Another video from Matt uh, and Angelo Parker taking the acclaims daddy ass out for a night on the town. Uh, they went to a hockey game, this, that, and the third, and how the JES appreciates both of them and they're paying all the dues. And then they'll have an answer next week to the acclaim if they're going to fight them or not. John Moxley and Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta defeat Dalton Castle and the boys. Dalton Castle was just there. Dalton Castle is a good piece of talent. I don't know why they haven't signed them. But the Blackpool Comic Club uh, attacks Ca uh, Castle and the boys in their entrance, beating them down. And then Rick Knox just started the match and everything just happened. Moxley gets a Coquita clutch on Castle and then hits the floor. And, and while Claudio Castanoa hits a Ruku bomb on one of the boys, easy win. Pretty much they got beat pretty easily, one, two, and three. A video package for Kenny Omega and Jeff Cobb pretty much shows their New Japan Pro Wrestling history, why this match is happening, because a lot of people in AEW do not watch New Japan Pro Wrestling. Alex Morvez was backstage with Adam Page. Nick Jack had suffered a separated shoulder, which that's been going on for months, and he's going to rehab it and be back in months, uh, or back in a few weeks. Blackfoot Comic Co. Don Callis enters the picture and apologizes for the falling down last week, an extension in hand. Moxley, Castanoli, Attack, Page, Callus, and Bleeding, Choking, and all that stuff. So, Kenny Omega does defeat with a one-winged angel, Jeff Cobb. That match was hella good. Can't complain. Um, there was some suplex. Cobb tried to uh, huge release of the German suplex. Omega landed on his feet, changed in uh, spinning polish hammer, and then backside into a knee strike. Uh, got Omega to... A two count. Omega uh, did a V trigger. Cobb, uh, great standing drop kick. Omega wiggled out for a fireman's carry and then hit the sharp dragon only for Cobb to pop up in a lariat and then double down. So this match ended up, this match ended up being um, 
a really good match. Kenny Omega is putting on five star matches to get you guys to come view AEW uh, Dynamite. So again, one hell of a match. Still IWGP US Champion. A video package. The guns. Uh, the guns for the AEW titles. Where the guns are FTR heroes. And uh, in the next week. So what it looks like, um, FTR loses, they they leave AEW. To me, this can go either two ways. I think they did resign. Why are they back in AEW early? I think they resigned. I really think that. I think they're going to win the titles um, soon, sooner than later. Um, so they challenged uh, the the uh, the the ass boys to a match. Uh, if they lose, they have to leave match. Orange Cassidy defeats the Butcher. I pretty much talked about this earlier in the review. One hell of a match. This is what they need to start doing with Orange Cassidy. They need to have him fight. I, I thought at one point he was going to lose the title because I wanted really the Butcher. I'm tired of Orange Cassidy. I think he should lose and move up to the next title like the TNT belt. You know, Orange Cassidy is another pillar that you build upon. You know what I mean? You build upon it. You know what I mean? And so forth and so on. Juice Robinson talks about his match against Action Andretti this Friday on Rampage. Every punch connected, and he said, "Ricky Starks, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat your ass." And this is rock hard, you know, stuff like that. Ruby Soho with uh, the, you know, the Outcast uh, defeat Will, Willow Nightingale. This was, this was a throwaway match, personally for me. The women's matches in AEW need to get better. They need to step up and get better. And I know Britt Baker watches a lot of reviews online. And Britt, one thing that you need to understand why we're so critical about your division, as you know, you say in, you know, all axes of AEW, is the fact that, you know, you guys got to put on better matches. They're sloppy half of the time. They're sloppy. They need to be more like the men's matches where they has a character. There's a beginning, middle, and end. Like the outcasts remind me a lot of what happened, the, the you know, the Riot Squad. Reminds me a lot of the Riot Squad or PCB or any of these things that happen in WWE, it's not something organically growing. And I feel by the week, it's kind of losing its luster. I love Soraya. I love what the women's division has done. And I know, I know Britt Baker goes around and watches reviews. She ain't no slouch. She knows what she knows what she wants. I respect her for it. You know, if she's not watching what her critics are saying, you ain't doing wrestling right, right? But Britt Baker needs to take criticism. You know, she gives us criticism as reviewers. But in critics and dirt sheets and stuff, she needs to take the criticism here. If you're going to be the face of the women's division and you take pride in what you're doing, as you say, in AEW's all access, you got to live the mantra here. You got to live this mantra. You can't get mad when people are saying your women's division is lackluster. And it, and it kind of is when you go to look at stardom, you go to look at WWE to a certain extent or MLW or even the impacts division. The Impact Division, the Knockouts Division, it does well because they put on bangers and matches. You know, again, like I said before, again, you guys have to really understand if you're going to put bangers and matches on these other promotions, you got to follow suit, man. Like, you got to have these bangers. Every week you're going to come out and you want to be on the lights of the biggest stages. You got to have those bangers and matches. And again, I just don't feel the outcast is that. Again, I feel Ruby Ruby Soho um, has kind of hit her peak in my in my view. Kind of, she hit it in WWE, and you can kind of see that, and that's why they didn't value her like that. And I see it here in AEW. And why are we having Tony Storm in these factions when Tony Storm should be a renegade fighting for titles? She is sexy in her own right. She should be fighting for titles, not being in groups. And Soraya. I feel Soraya lost a step when she came back to AEW. I feel like she lost a little bit of a step. Soraya should be fighting for that TBS belt. See, Ruby Soho should be a champion. Soraya should uh, are somewhat in a faction with two champions. If they're going to treat this like the Combat Combat Club or the Blackpool Combat Club, these people need to come out and they need to send a mission every week, beat people up. They're looking weak when you have, you know... Uh, when you have people like Britt Baker coming out and you have, you know, Hager coming out and you have Ruby Soho coming out and making your faction look weak. And I think they need another person in that faction because it just three of them right now and they need another one. 
and I think really would work perfect for them in the Outcast would be Athena. Bring in the Warring, War, the Ring of Honor Women's Champion. You bring her in, or you put Taya in that, and you make it you make it a thing. That's just my personal opinion. Take it for what you see. And I already talked about Adam Cole defeating Daniel Garcia. It was a hell of a match. With all the head issues, everything going into it, one hell of a match. I'm looking at my show notes, so just keep in mind. So I've written everything down. A uh, couple pile drivers, Cole's head, you know, you know, kept teasing his head issues. Um, you know, Adam Cole's a great seller of things, right? Personally. And then during the entire match, Cole mentioned that his comeback, you know, and, you know, all this stuff. Uh, two super kicks. Um, Cole gets to the ropes. Garcia opens up a pose instead of immediately following up. Uh, Garcia taps both of... Uh, or taps into both of Adam Adam Cole's arms, hits another pile driver. Adam Cole kicks out. Garcia changes to a super kick, and then a following Panama Sunrise, and by the boom, and gets the win. One, two, three. I will say this: AEW did a really good job leading into um, All Access. Again, like I said before, um, I enjoyed it. <coughs> and and excuse me there. And uh, they, they plugged all access. Anyway, got to give you guys a review and send you guys on your way for tonight. I got to be honest with you. One hell of a show. Um, these are the shows AEW need to be doing going forward. They need to stop doing four weeks of good shows and then one down week. But I guess you got to give them that. You know, every show cannot be perfect. So this one's going to get always a B- minus for me. This is a B- minus show. This is a an eight, a solid across the board. Um, this is a show that I would say go ahead and watch. It's a good show. My name is Ray Frome. Hope you guys enjoyed this wrestling review. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.